paper. Paper, madam. Paper, mister. Read all about it here. If you want it, we got it. Any country, more languages here, lady. Any paper at all. How's that? What good is it? Come on, get in the Christmas spirit. Well, maybe it'll help this. Hey, where are you going? I just want to get the little dope on a horse that's running in the forest. Uh -huh. And then you'll want to borrow a half a buck to bet on Jimmy, I never borrow money to bet on the horses. You won't suck me. Okay, Pop. Papers! Nice business that kid's got there. Best stand in the district. Sure, paper from all over the world. You know, someday I'm going to have that stand. Yeah? What about his big brother? What do I care about his brother? Merry Christmas. Now, ain't that nice? Let's sing Jingle Bells with the good little boys. Jingle oh, Bells, hey. Jingle. Hey! Who took the lid off the garbage and let you out? Forget it. Why don't you guys move along now? Play someplace else, huh? Well, it's a free street, and I always play where I want to. Oh, charge it. Your credit's no good here. Oh, it isn't, huh? No. Well, I'll remember that when I take over this corner, and you're paying me for the privilege of working here. Oh, here comes your friend. I'll see you around. Having any trouble with him, Jimmy? Nothing I can't handle. Why don't you smack him? That's the easy way. Hey, here comes the truck, fellas. Free on it, Jimmy. Okay, okay Al. Come on, come on, Jimmy, okay, give me 40. Come on. Can I have 50? Come on. Yeah. I need a lot. Fine, Fifty. Give me 52, huh? Fifty here. I'll take 50. It. Okay. Give me a minute. Okay. Take care of the rest of us, will you, Jim? Where you going? To school, you know that. Now watch the stand till I come back. I had your room all nice and warm for you. <laughs> nice and warm in here, isn't it? Yeah, thanks, Pop. Did you get the apple I brought you? Here's your racing for. Oh, that's soft with you, James. That'll give me something to read. If uh, you're not going anywhere tonight, uh, I have a couple of passes to the picture show if you and Gimpy want to go. I'd like to, Pop, but I gotta go to night school tonight. We're having a mock trial, and I'm defending a fellow for murder. You know, practice and courtroom strategy. I'm fine. You know, that's what I like about you, James. Your perseverance. I was telling that same thing to Tim Farley this morning. You know, Tim and your father and me came from the same county. I said to Tim, I says, uh, that boy is going far. And there's nothing going to stop him. And you know why? Because he sticks to business. Well, thanks, Pop. I, I try. And uh, speaking about uh, business, I, uh, I have an opportunity to make a small investment to pay us back big returns. What's the horse's name? Uh, Baby G in the fort tomorrow at New Orleans. 30 to 1 or more. Not interested. But I have the tip you might say right from the horse's mouth. You can't believe a horse, Pop. You ought to know that by now. Well, could you lend me the loan of a dollar? No. That's what I thought. Want your apple back? James, you're always clowning. See you later, Pop. Or two, you're losing your power of persuasion. Come on. Oh, hello. Want to join? Come on, let's get in. No, 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 no. Jimmy's in school. It ain't right. Oh, come on. No, no, it ain't right. You better run along and study your Sunday school papers. Oh, yeah? 
Yeah, yeah, run along and tell the boss. All right, boys, feed me. You paid it. <laughs> Seven. There it is. Jeez. What are you guys doing here? Why aren't you on the corner selling papers? Oh, dry up. Who's talking to you? <laughs> now, what's the matter? You boys lost your nerve? Come on, come on. Let's hey, let me a dime, will you? I'll roll my own dough. No, not you. You might get spanked. I'll worry about that. Roll them up. Hey, what do you think I'm throwing these for? Exercise? I want to see those dice. Hmm. Now, next time you want to see them, put down some money. Or else get out and let us make dough. All right, here's 15 cents. Come on, boys. Who's going to play it? I'm a sucker to do this. Oh, you're a sucker, huh? All right. Nine, 90 days. You ought to get live. Well, there it is again. All right, you kids, on your feet. I've warned you before. I thought Jimmy told you to keep out of dice games. Well, well, you too, Gimpy. I'm surprised. Yeah, you can't do nothing to us. It's a free country. Not afraid of the likes of you, Spike. And if you open your trap again, it's the back of my hand to you. Come on now, get moving on. Where are you taking us? I'm taking you down before the judge, and it wouldn't surprise me if he sent you all to reform school. Oh, hello, Bert. How are you? How's things going? What, what's going on? Huh? I'm taking these kids in for playing dice. Huh? Oh, you are? Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves, yeah. all of you. Every one of you Just a be... minute, just huh? a minute. Now, you keep out of this, Pop. Well, you're not going to risk Gimpy, are I you? I certainly am. But it ain't constitutional. You can't do it. Now, you get moving, or I'll take you along, too. Come on now, get going, all of you. Go on. Go on. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Come on. Mr. Simpson, you will like this prosecutor. The proposition is this. The defendant is charged with murder. The witness is prepared to testify that the defendant is known to her to be dangerous, a possible murderer. I want you to invent your speeches as you go along to show me how you can think under pressure before a jury. Very well, Mr. Simpson, proceed. Um, uh, Miss Scott, it is your testimony that this defendant is known to you personally to be a dangerous person. Answer yes or no. I repeat an unequivocal answer, yes or no. Yes. You know this defendant to have definite homicidal tendencies. Yes. Your witness, Mr. Keenan. Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Am I to understand you're willing to swear you know my client to be a dangerous person? You know the man who is here on trial for his life to be a potential murderer? I certainly do. You know beyond any question? I do. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I ask you, do we really know anything except from our own past personal experience? The witness says she knows my client is a dangerous man. The witness says she knows my client has always been a murderer at heart. How does she know? How can she know? How do you know my client has always been a murderer at heart? Did he ever murder you? No. Of course not. We say we know wind will blow out a candle. How do we know from past experience? We say we know we all must die. Do we know? We haven't died yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just a moment, Mr. Keenan. Your speech sounds faintly familiar. Well, I, I guess it does, sir. Whose is it? Well, I, I read it in a book. I'll tell you something, though. The man who made that speech got an acquittal on the first ballot. Is that so? Who was he? A man named Abraham Lincoln. I thought so. This is incompetent, irrelevant, and immaterial. And when are you going to stop quoting Abraham Lincoln? I'd say Mr. Keenan could hardly pick a better person to quote. There were many better lawyers than Abraham Lincoln, but there never was a man who could argue more successfully to a jury. Keep it up, Mr. Keenan. Excuse me, Mr. Wilson. What are you busting in here for? I had to burst out all the kids in jail. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson. That's all right, Jimmy. Could I be excused now? Of course. Thank you. It's a terrible thing, yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, we're outside. outside. Where do we get outside? What's it all about? Officer Burke caught them shooting dice with that low-down Spike Morgan running the game. Spike? No less. And then Burke took them all to jail. Was Gimby in the game? Sure. What are you going to do? I don't know.
Nick, not in the courtroom. What's the matter, you a cop too? All right, you boys, stand up. On your face. Take off your hat. What's your name? Gimpy. Gimpy? Well, what's your real name? William McKinley Smith. William McKinley Smith. Well, that's a pretty fine name for a gambler. Your name's Morgan, isn't it? That's right. I thought so. You've been here before. Yeah. Advice doesn't seem to do you much good. Do you boys know what I've got to do to you? Officer Burke here has warned you repeatedly, especially you, Spike. Officer Burke didn't want to bring you to the court, and I don't want to have to punish you. But I've got to teach you a lesson before it's too late. As for you, Spike, a few years in reform school might do you some good. And you other boys... Judge. Can I say something? Who are you? My name's Keenan, James Michael Keenan. Officer Burke knows me. Yeah, I know. I mean, around the newsstand. Some of these kids work for him. Well, what is it? Well, according to the Constitution, a defendant has the right to select his own counsel, doesn't he? Does he, Mr. Keenan? Yes, sir. Well, how about it? Am I your lawyer? Come on, come on! All right. I understand the charge is gambling. That's right. It says in the statute books that to convict for gambling, you must have witnesses. How much did you lose? Or did you win? Huh? There we are, Judge. No wins, no losses, no gambling. No, I've had enough of this. Judge, if an officer strikes a counselor during a case, that's contempt of court, isn't it? You seem very well versed in the law, Mr. Keenan. I I'm studying it. Yes, I suspected that. Well, what will happen if I let your uh, clients go home? Well, they won't be back here again, sir. You seem very sure of that. Well, if they want to keep on working for me, they've got to stay out of trouble. Very well. I'll place you all on probation to Mr. Keenan. That's all. Thank you very much. Sir. All right, on your way, on your way. Very good. Tell me about that boy. You've heard of Tap Keenan. The racketeer? The big shot. That's his brother. Well, he doesn't act like a racketeer's brother. No, sir, he never did. Who's the little crippled boy? He lives with Jimmy, works for him. Jimmy's taken care of him ever since the poor little fellow's mother died. That's two years back. No parents, eh? Well, he ought to be in an orphan asylum. If you ask me, Your Honor, little Gimpy couldn't have a better home or finer care than he's got right where he is. Quite a lad, this Keenan boy. They call him the Abe Lincoln of Ninth Avenue. Why? He's trying to pattern his life after Lincoln. But he's not growing up with the chance Abe Lincoln had. All right, come on, come on. I don't owe you a dime. How much did he take off you with those crooked dice? A mm, dollar and 12 cents. Yeah, and when we got pinched, he grabbed up all the coin in the game. All right, you're going to hand it over, or am I going to tell my friend the judge I can't be responsible for you? Yeah, all right. Just don't do it again. You're not telling me. I'm telling you, don't get any of my kids in the game again. I'd like to have a talk with that boy. See if you can find him. Yes, Your Honor. You better get that stand of yours cleaned up too, Mr. Keenan. For what? Because any day now, I'm taking over the corner. Well, why don't you try it tonight? Well, I'm uh, waiting till your big brother gets what's coming to him. Then you can't yell to him for help. I don't need any help from my big brother, and you don't... Oh, Jimmy! Judge Carroll wants to see you. What you want to see me for? 
He's your friend, ain't he? Get gone, Spike. Yeah, you fellas better go on back to the stand. Give wait here for me with Pop, will you? This way. Judge, I apologize for interrupting your proceedings the way I did a moment ago. I hope I wasn't in contempt. No, oh, that's all right. Your apology is accepted. Why are you studying law? 10th Avenue Night School. Who's your teacher? Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson? Oh, I know Mr. Wilson. Good man. I think I'll have to call him up about you, if only to suggest that he give you some special tips on courtroom etiquette. Now, for instance, when you interrupt the judge, try saying, uh, if your honor please. It flatters me. Sometimes helps your case. Oh, I see what you mean, Your Honor. Come up here a minute. Things look a little different from here, don't they? Yes, sir. You've got quite a problem assuming responsibility for all those boys. Well, I'm used to problems, sir. I'll, I'll guarantee the behavior of my boys. How about the Morgan boy? Well, he... He doesn't see things the way you and I do, Judge. He hasn't had our advantages. Well, there's something to that. <clears throat> Isn't he sort of, uh, of an enemy of yours? Well, I never let myself think I have any. Your ideal had many enemies. Yes, but malice towards none. Here's a book might interest you. The Humorous Side of Lincoln. I've never read that. It was that side of him that made him so human and just. I could understand that. Pretty hard to have a sense of humor when the going's tough. It's true. How's your paper business going? Pretty good. Will you be able to go to college? Well, I hope to have enough saved up, yes, sir. Doesn't your brother aid you financially? No. He has plenty. Well, I can't use that kind of money, sir. You know, Jimmy, it takes a long time for a young lawyer to make a decent living. He did all right. That's right. <laughs> Well, Councilman, come in and see me again sometime. Thank you, Your Honor. Goodbye. Bye. Gee, he's been with the judge for a long time. Yes, they take it. Say, that's a hunch. The judge in the court tomorrow. Huh? You know what'll happen when you leave the stand again, don't you? I'll get a new boy, that's all. That's right. If it hadn't been for me hurrying to your rescue, you'd be in jail right now. You know that. Okay, Pop. Well, I'm just looking after your interest, James. Thank you very much. You couldn't... Uh, uh, no. That's what I thought. Oh. I'll never shoot dice again as long as I live. Never. No? No, sir. And we're friends again? Okay, I'll forgive you this time. Who else? And after what you did for him with the judge. What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? You guys are going to clean it up, that's what. If you hadn't been shooting dice, this wouldn't have happened. Well, come on. All right, dog. Oh. We ought to be dragging Spike over here and making him do this. Yeah, even if we had to break his dirty neck. He's pro to Jim. He ought to tell the judge about it. Nah, Jim don't need to be no squealer. He can let poor guys like Spike. But he don't like fighting. He wants everything according to law. Yeah. There's an extra you can sell, Keenan. Do you want any more? Yeah. Give me another hundred. Okay, Al. Gee, Jimmy's brother's in a jam again. Listen to this. 
Again, as often in the past, police will question Tap Keenan, but nobody seriously expects he will be held very long. They'll never get him. Oh, he gets away with it every time. Oh. I wonder if he did the shooting. No, nah, he probably hired somebody. Yeah. You guys gonna talk or sell paper? Well, come on, get going. Oh, boy, we'll sell. 30. Hey, Strip, hey, Baxter, hey, all about the big silly. Jimmy, don't go after Spike till we get back, huh? Yeah. Maybe we ought to take guns, too, huh? Extra. Extra. I'll let her get you. What a pity. Ain't got such a bad face. No charge. Is that any way to sell papers? No. Extra paper! General Investments Incorporated. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Keenan isn't in. General Investments Incorporated. I'm sorry, I can't call Mr. Keenan. Yeah. Could I see Mr. Keenan? Yes. I'd like to see Mr. Keenan. I'm sorry, Mr. Keenan isn't seeing anyone today. Well, tell him it's his brother. Mr. Keenan, there's a boy here who says he's your brother. Let's get go right in. General Investments Incorporated. That's how much you want from that guy, and don't come back without it. Scram. What do you know? It's been so long since I saw you, I wouldn't know you. I know you. Sure, I'm always in the paper. See my picture in the extras? Not very good. I'll have to have some new ones made. Smoke? No. Good thing you don't. Caught a kid like you smoking to knock your ears down. Come on, sit down. How do you like the office? It's all right. I had a big year. Pretty soon I'm going to own the whole building. I got a system, kid. The more I get, the more I want. The more I want, the more I get. That's the secret of my success. I want you to remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll remember. What are you doing? I own a newsstand. Hmm, so I make the news and you sell it, huh? At last we're in business together. That's the way it should be. Where do you live? I got a nice room in the basement in the old house we used to live in. In the basement? Hmm, I have neglected you. Well, now that I'm in the money, what would you like to be? I'm gonna be a lawyer. That's great, smart. You know what I pay my mouthpiece? 25 grand a year. I'll tell you what. I'll put you through college, give you 50 bucks a week, car. You can come and live with me, and then when you graduate, you'll work for me. That's the setup. Come on, what do you say? I'll take you out and buy you some clothes and dial you all up. Can't have a brother of mine going around looking like that, selling papers and living in a basement. Oh, I'm doing all right. All right. Come on, come on. I'll show you my place. Wait till you see where I live. I, I can't right now, Ted. Why not? Well, you wouldn't remember what day it is. According to the paper, it's still Friday. So what? So it's Mother's birthday. I always take her some flowers. That's right. I'll go with you. Get a big bunch of flowers. Oh, I don't care. Fifty, a hundred bucks. Is that all right? Red roses with the big long stems? No, I, I got them. Some violets. She always liked them, remember? In there? Yeah. Never mind. You're a funny kid. Okay, let's go. something to you in there. Makes you feel kind of ashamed. Don't it? Does it do that to you? Sure. Leaving that cheap headstone on Mom's grave all this time. When I get back to the office, I'm going all over a new one. Something special. Big. Maybe an angel with wings on it. 
I want you to help me figure it out. It doesn't mean anything else to you, huh? Nothing else. What else? Well, truthfully, I thought bringing you down here might help you remember what you promised Mom. Sure, I remember. I promised her I'd look after you tonight. Well, I'm gonna do it, just like I said. You've forgotten the rest, huh? About going straight, keeping decent, and amounting to something? Oh, so that's it. You don't think I amount to anything? I'm glad she isn't here to see what you turned out to be. I don't see any difference between you and any common thief. Now listen, kid, you're talking to your brother. You're no brother of mine from now on. You're just a crook, a cheap, dirty, rotten, low-down crook. And if it wasn't for Mom, I'd change my name. Listen, you white. I'll keep away from you from now on. Do the same for me. Too. You know, this old world would be a fine place to live in if more people would live by that rule. Jim, that's what I like about you. You and me understand those things. The racing form isn't out yet, Puff. Did I ask you for one? That's gratitude. Every time I try to help anybody, I always get a slap in the face. I don't know. Hey, what have you been up to? What are you hiding here for? Go on. Beat it. What are you crying about? I ain't crying a man. Who broke your stick? Nobody can't you leave me alone. Do you come over here to tell what happened to you? Cut no, it out. Come along here now. Jimmy. Cut it out. Jimmy, someone broke his stick and he won't say who did it. Who did it? Come on, who did it? Thinks I'm scared. Thinks I'm little. I'll show him. I'm kidding. Spike, huh? I was down on the corner showing my papers, and he said I didn't have any business there. Then he took my crutch and broke it. All right, take it easy. Hey, tough guy. Pick on me if you want to. Stay away from that little kid. Now, keep off my corner. Ain't you gonna do nothing about it? No, I gotta be smart. And tell the judge. Let's get the rest of those monkeys, Jim. You stick around here. Next time something happens to the stand, I'm gonna take it out of your pay. All of you. Hey, for not an issue here, paper, sir. Hey, for not an issue, madam. Hey, for not an issue here. You don't have to carry me. Merry Christmas, Jimmy. What'd you do that for? It's Christmas, ain't it? Sure. And that's Santa Claus. Yeah. There ain't no Santa Claus. Oh, I see. I'm gonna have trouble with you now, huh? How do you know there ain't no Santa Claus? What'd you ever do for me? You haven't been a good kid. I never brought me anything before I knew enough to be there. A fine thing to say. How would you feel now if he did bring you something this Christmas after a crack like that? Yes. Don't make me laugh. Why can't you get it into your head that when you give, you receive? When you do a good deed, you get paid back twofold. I suppose the Santa Claus he gave the nickel to is going to give him a dime back. Hey, take it easy now. I'm all right. What you going to do, break your neck? No. You manage it? Sure. Say, Pop, get me something to fix this crutch, huh? All right, I got something here in the box here. Make some coffee, Jim. Sure. You know what that kid needs, Pop? What? Something he never had in his life. A Christmas tree. Say, that's a great idea, Jimmy. Will you get him one? Sure I will, and I'll string popcorn myself and put it all over the tree the same way I did when I was a boy. <laughs> swell. Get him a swell one with a lot of lights and stuff to hang yeah. over it, too. Mm -hmm. You think three dollars will cover all that? Three dollars? I'll bet you I'll have chains left. Well, here, here's, here's the three bucks. All right. right. There. Here you are. His eyes will stick out like a fish, I'll bet you. Well, get a good one, you know. Uh -huh. Not too small. No.
clutch will be ready in a minute, Jim. Thanks for fixing it, Jimmy. Don't thank me, thank Pop. Huh? Yeah, he's fixing it now. How much did you give him? Not a cent. I bet he borrowed something then. What's the matter? Don't you trust anybody? No! What are we gonna do about Spike? We're gonna ignore him. What? I-G-N-O-R-E. Ignore him. If you'd only say the word, we could lick his whole gang. The argument's over. I get tired of having somebody always fight my battles. If I was a little bigger... If you were bigger, you'd be dumber. Be fighting every minute, not saving up any brains. Yeah, I know. Honesty's the best policy. Keep out of trouble. Don't cheat. Don't gamble. Don't fight. A lot of don'ts and nothing left to do. It's a cinch for you. you got talent and everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy for me. Yeah, but it's tough on a fellow like me with different ideas. Now be quiet, will you? I got some studying to do. Peace on earth. I can't seem to get that Christmas spirit business. You will. Well, I'll try. Not a boy. But I'm still glad you socked Spike. It is important to remember that a lawyer comes to court prepared. But a truthful witness is not prepared. He has thought so much about the facts as he knows them that he is no longer sure what is fact and what is fiction. Too bad he didn't poke the other two guys. The intelligent lawyer can take advantage of this doubt in the witness's mind, ethically and justifiably, in his effort to separate truth from imagination. Sudden attack often produces strange results. Sudden attack. Strange results. So! So what? So where were you on the night of November 8th? How do I know? Hey! And how do you know it was a black car? Might have been a green car, or blue, or even deep maroon. And how far were you from the corner when it happened? And what happened? You can't get out of it that way. How do you know that was John Doe in the back seat? You don't know, and yet you dare to perjure yourself. You come here with a well-learned story, more fiction than fact. You dare to say you saw the shot fired. I never saw nothing. Yes, you did. You saw the girl in red. Otherwise, your whole story's a lie. You weren't on the corner at all. And if you weren't, where were you? Well, can't you remember? Only eight months ago, 7.14 p.m., the night of the murder. What kind of a witness are you? Answer me yes or no, once and for all, and stop squirming. And remember the penalty for perjury. You swear upon your oath that there was no other weapon in your overcoat pocket except the shotgun? Do you or do you not? Do you feel all right? Huh? Maybe you got a fever, huh? What? You've been acting awful funny. Here's your stick. Shh. What's the matter? Something's wrong with him. You better call the doctor. A doctor? Oh, give him some coffee. That'll fix him all right. Your Honor, I charge this witness was falsifying the facts, and I demanded he be punished for perjury to the full extent of the law. Now look what you did. I did? Did you do that? Yes, you let the coffee pot run over. You ought to get 30 days for perjury. For, 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 for. All right, I'm crazy too. Take me away. You're looking for a nice Christmas tree? Yes, I'm looking for a nice one, but you don't seem to have much here. Oh, what is it? For a bigger party, smaller party, or just the family? It's a grand party. It's going to be a big party. And I want a tree big enough to hold all the decorations I'm going to put on it. I'm going to have popcorn strung all over it. I'm going to have apples and oranges hanging down and decorations all over it. Well, how about this one here? Now, how much is that? <laughs> for you, my friend, I give it to you for a dollar. Well, how much is this 50 cent one here? Oh, half a dollar. No, I'd like something in between the two. Something for about 75 cents, I think. I got it just the one for you. Look, this one here for 75 cents. Oh, I guess I'll take a look around. So, now, how about something to eat? Turkey. Turkey, huh? Eh? <laughs> Come here. Give this a turkey here, she's nice and tender. When you got them all to fix them up, all you have to do is to put them inside of the oven and she cook them by herself. And when you start to taste it, it's going to taste just like wild turkey. Wild turkey? Yes, wild turkey. Wild turkey. And this tree. Nice wild leaves turkey. and everything. Wild turkey. <laughs> Can't feed. 
There. Wild turkey. Let me see. Wild turkey, wild turkey, wild turkey. What are you doing that for? Because it's closing time. We're through for tonight. We never closed this early before. Well, this is Christmas Eve. It's different. What's wrong with you? Not a thing in the world. Come on, we're going home. Why? Will you stop asking so many questions? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Jimmy. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, boys. People will think you're crazy. Maybe I am. Thank you, Jimmy. The same fella, you're doing it twice. So what? Just in case I'm wrong. Good thing Christmas only comes once a year. Why? You'd have us broke. We can get a work less for looking windows. No, we got something better than that. I got a surprise for you. What's a surprise? Now you wait and see if you get inside. Can't you tell me now? No, no. Close your eyes. How can I see with my eyes closed? Close your eyes. Ready? One, two, three. Open your eyes. Well? Wait for me. I'll be right back. Hey, Pop. Dear. Where's the drink? Well, you see, Jimmy, I... You didn't I... get it. What happened to the three dollars? Well, I, I went in the store to get the tree, and I was looking at the tree, but right staring me in the face was a great big turkey, and it was marked three bucks, and I, I thought, well, now, uh, the other day I saw a horse named Wild Turkey in, in the form sheet, and I said to myself, I'll, I'll, I'll put the three dollars on Wild Turkey, and we'll have a bigger Christmas than you uh -huh. thought of having, you see, I'll okay, get the turkey well, in the tree. Okay, okay, but you spoil a little kid's Christmas. Where's the surprise? Well, look, Gimp, I was going to get a tree, and then I thought, well, it's kind of childish, you know. We're grown up. What happened? Well, I gave Pop a couple of bucks to get a tree, and he, he lost it. Lost it? He spent it. I'll get it back. Sit down. Forget about it. It's too late now. You're giving your receipt, huh? You get Spike out of jail, and he wrecks your stand. Do a good deed and you get it back double. You give Pop some dough and you never see it again. Now you still believe in that stuff? Yes. I've been looking for you. Why? Never mind why. Come on. He didn't do anything. You stay here, Gimp. You gotta go to jail, I'm going too. You'll keep out of this. What's this all about? No use asking questions. Move along. Move along. It's my custom every Christmas to have some of the boys in my district up for tree and turkey. Now, uh, if you can get away, how would you like to come and bring up your boys? Uh, five of them? As many as you like. We've got a big turkey. Well, we we'll, would we'll, we'll love it, sure. Uh, see you tomorrow evening, then, eh? Yes, sir. All right. Good night. Good night. We'll be there. Good night. Huh. Now what do you say? If I hadn't got pinched, you'd never met the judge. Did you ever see a more hard-boiled guy? <laughs> Your boss is ready, my lord. Don't you think it's kind of dangerous this time of the year? I might catch pneumonia. You might catch something else if you don't get in there and take your bath. And no storm. Behind the ears, too.
Well, here goes. Oh! Oh, golly, this is cold. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers, fathers brought forth to this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that the government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. Oh, golly. I'll get pneumonia, sure. Oh, golly. Oh, my head. When are we going to get a bigger bathtub? Hey, that's something. Gee, does a bath make a feller feel good? You're glad you made me take one. Oh, well, you're glad, huh? Oh, hey, fella, how about something else? Did you forget? Get your mind clean now, too. Don't forget anything. And please don't let Jimmy find out I didn't take a bath. Take you to the party. Maybe I don't want to go. Well, that suits me. Better be a good dinner the way I'm suffering. Mm -hmm. Sure. Look at that. Enough dirt behind them ears to grow potatoes. Ooh, it's cold. Cold, it's warm. Hey, we'll feel it. No, I'll get pneumonia. You'll get pneumonia. You'll get nothing. You'll pay a big doctor bill. Yeah. Ooh. Close your eyes. Hold still. I remember, first time Judge Carroll saw you, he almost put you in jail, so watch your step tomorrow. And as soon as you see him, take off your cap. Why? Don't ask so many questions. And say yes, sir, and no, sir, to him. And whatever they have to eat, you don't want any second helpings. Don't I? No. You remember now. Yes, sir. It's going to be a real Ooh, Christmas. It's cold. No. Oh. There we oh. are. Now. Well, here I am. Oh, Uncle, a tree looks grand. Well, I got all the presents. I hope they're all right. Oh, uh, thanks for helping me out, Anne. They'll do, I'm sure. I don't know a thing about your guests. What did you get them last year? Oh, last year I had a little trouble. They all wanted guns. Guns? Mm -hmm. Oh, my, I got things like harmonicas and neckties and fountain pens. Well, after all, they're the sort of things Jimmy's boys ought to appreciate. That is, if he has the influence over them I think he has. Well, let's go over the list. I have some tags. The list? Well, where is the list? Oh, here, I've got it here. Now, well, let's see. There's Jimmy, Jigsy, Beansy, Sammy, and Gimpy. Well, there isn't any lead of the names, is there? I'll have to eeny meeny them. No, yeah, you'll make out, I'm sure. Uncle Joe, are you sure these boys won't resent my being here? Why should anyone resent it? Especially these boys who've probably never met anyone like you before. Well, I only meant that well, maybe I'll hold them down. Well, I hope you do. Well, mind you, these boys are all right. They're perfectly normal. But they've had a bad environment, no fit homes, grim surroundings. You know, they need to meet somebody like you, somebody to look up to. You'll have a wonderful influence on them. But this Keenan boy, how did he overcome his background? Well, that's very unusual. Instead of climbing a ladder to a second-story window, He's climbing one to an ideal. 
He seems to have faith in himself and faith in everybody. Why, he even said a good word for a incorrigible in my court. So that's what you see in him? A reflection of yourself? Oh, no, no, no comparison. Why, I have everything and more. Now, here's a boy with practically nothing. He goes out of his way to help people. Why, he's even taken care of a little cripple. Gimpy. Yes, yeah, Gimpy. Well, I had everything, everything I could wish for. But here's a boy who figuratively sits by the fireside with a shingle, a piece of charcoal, studying law, working on a career, asking no favors from anybody. Say, by the way, we mustn't make him think we're doing him a favor today. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll make believe we're giving his party for the little fellow. We'll make him the guest of honor. <laughs> You know, I think I'm giving this party for myself. I'll have more fun out of it than they do. But not any more than I will. <laughs> Thanks for letting me be here, Uncle Jim. Oh, you are at the party. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, dear. Jimsy, Jigsy, Beansy. Oh, I've got to write all these things out here. Bet nobody's home. Well, there better be. I kept from eating all day. Gee, look at the table. What's the hey, table? Come on, come on, you guys. Look. Now look out. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry come on in, boys. Merry Christmas. Any more out there? No, that's no. it. All right, come on, let's get Merry out of the table. All right. Boys. Merry Christmas, Jimmy. Come on, let's Merry get a meal. I think we've all met before. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Gimby. Come on in, everybody. That's the boy. Hey, it's a nice place you got here. Yes! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> got no way to go. Oh, well, Gee, look at this. What you doing? Eat up. 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 Eat Gee, it's the kind that grows out of the ground. I have it sent down from my farm in Maine. You hear that, Jimmy? It's from the woods. Sure, it's from the woods. It's got a big place in it. Yeah, oh, yes. We got a lot of those trees on it. Mm, fine. Look at it. Oh, Jimmy, I want you to meet my niece, Miss Carroll. <clears throat> And this is Mr. Keenan. Yes, I know. I've heard all about the promising young attorney. Well, you have? I'm Jimmy. Yeah, How are you? And I'm Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh. So this is Gimpy. Merry Christmas, Gimpy. Merry Christmas. Yes, yes, Judge. You want to take a look at this bread while it's still one piece? Boy, look at boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, big as a house. Look at the size of it, would you? Gee, look at the size of the thing. The People versus T. Gobbler. Are we ready for trial? People are ready, Your Honor. And the defense? Oh, the defense is ready, Your Honor. Let's go to trial. Boy, look at the radishes. Oh, boy. Come on, let's take a look at the The court will be seated. Miss uh, District Attorney, what do you intend to prove? I intend to prove, Your Honor, that Mr. T. Gobbler is guilty of hoarding grain, living on the fat of the land, and uh, thereby producing a distressing state of hunger among the people. He sure is. He's about 25 pounds guilty. He's been hoarding chestnuts and oysters. <laughs> It is the judgment of this court that the estate of Mr. T. Gobbler be divided into equal portions to satisfy the appetites of the people. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> now, who's going to get a lay? I think Gimpy would rather have white meat. 
Yes, he would. Don't you want some celery or olives first? Don't you want any salad? You sure paid your debt to society. <laughs> well, now, boys, if you can stagger in after that dinner, I have a little business oh, to transact here. Yeah? That's Sit what down. the pie did, oh, Judge. Oh, I mean, Your Honor, that's the first time I've had pie and pudding at the same meal. Mm, pie and pudding, <laughs> eh? <laughs> oh, all right, now, wait a minute. Oh, Ann, come here a minute, will you? You've got to help me with this, because I can't handle all these packages in a minute. We were short one, so I had to take one of your neckties. Now, let's see. Here's the first package. When we find out who this is for, this is for Mr. Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy! Oh, but they went to jail. No, 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 wait. Put order in the court, or I'll have you all up for contempt. Right, Judge? Jigsy, who's Jigsy? That's me, that's me. That's for me. Who's that for? Blackfoot. Oh, that's the guy. Oh, here, here's for Sammy. Oh, Sammy, for you. you got yeah, well, I guess that's all, isn't it? Well, yeah, that's it. Oh, wait a minute. Here's another one. William McKinley Smith. Is there anyone in the house named Smith? Oh, that's me! <laughs> <laughs> uh, William Smith, here's another one. Hey, <laughs> oh. McKinley Smith. <laughs> and here's one Smith. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, boys, now open them up. Come on. Hey, get, listen to this. All right. James Michael Keenan, counselor at law. Oh, Your Honor. Oh, thank you so much. I. From you. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks an awful lot. I'll have to become a great lawyer now just so I can carry it. Well, I'm sure it won't be long. But you haven't looked inside. Go on, open it. The humorous side of Lincoln. Oh, Your Honor, I. I don't Speed. know. Speed. Speed. Come on. I'm, I'm not prepared to speak, and I asked the court to grant me a postponement. Granted. <laughs> Gosh, and, and look, I'm going to go camping now. i got a knife. Oh, boy. Oh, don't wreck it. Wait a minute.
Christmas I've had in years. Oh, come on now, none of that. <laughs> right back at you. <laughs> hey, look at the watch. Look at the present. Right? Look what I got. Look. My heart can't come for her at all. His niece gave me that. Now do you believe in Santa Claus? Yeah, how about it? Do I believe in Santa Claus? And what do you? Are you. foreign language stuff. You know, fellas, there's no business in it. We'll build a new stand and, uh... There goes your protection, kid. So the Big Shot brother's running away, huh? I guess you better get after him because I'm taking over the corner from now on. A fine couple of mugs your mother raised. Spike tried to move in on you again? Yeah, but Jimmy moved him out. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you folks. Get moving. The show's over. Come on, get that car out of there. Come on, now. Come on, now. Where's that teeny kid? There, Jimmy. Heard what happened to your brother, didn't you? Yeah, sure. Seen him around here lately? No. Any idea where he's hiding out? No, sir. Sure about that? Yeah. He's telling you the truth, Sergeant. He don't have nothing to do with his brother. He never did. 
He's certainly not going to help him now. I'll vouch for him. Okay. Go, Sergeant. Yeah? All right. Let me take a look at you. Uh, you better go home and get that thing fixed up. I'm all right. You're not all right. No, no, go on home. Go on, go on. All right. Okay. Calling all cars. Tap Keenan scene near 10th Avenue and 30th Street. Tap Keenan scene near 10th Avenue and 30th Street. Come on, let's go. with you? What are you doing? They're hot after me. I'm in a jam. Yeah, I know. They finally caught up to you. Not me. This is a great spot. They'll never find me here. No, they won't. That's the spirit, kid. Look, I got a lot of dough put away, but we'll have to lay low for a while. Then I'll send you after the dough. We'll blow town, change our name. Everything will be great. We'll be riding on top of the world. Proceed to 9th Avenue and 18th Street District. Tap Keenan has just been seen in that neighborhood. Is that the only way to get out of here? There's a door. What are you driving at? I told you to leave me alone. I told you to keep away from me. You've made things tough enough, now you're not gonna use this place for a hideout. You get out of here, I'll turn you in. Why, you little yeller? Turn who in? Your own brother, your own flesh and blood? You're not gonna turn anybody in. Come on there, Alice. We take the front. Work through the block. Well, then why don't you go out there and take what's coming to you? You think I'm crazy and wind up in the hot seat? You'll have to come in and get me. Can you use me, Sergeant? Yes. Hey, Bill, come here. Both of you fellas, come on. I'll blast the first guy that comes through that door. And I'll blast you if you make a move. Go ahead, they'll hear you. Come on, take him out of here. I'll get you for this, young Come on, now he goes. Come on. Give me. Give me. Give him to me. Take it easy, Jimmy. Take it easy. He's been shot. Call a doctor. Get an ambulance. Call a doctor. Do something. Gimpy. Can you hear me? Hiya, Jimmy. I'm sorry. I ain't sore. You're gonna be all right now. You're gonna get well. Beat your ears off if you don't. I ain't scared. Do you think they'll put my picture in the paper? Maybe? Sure. Sure, sure they will. Do you think they'll put out an extra? You're a hero, ain't you? Okay. Things are kind of slow, Jim. Do we have to stick around? Yeah. Be an extra out in a minute. from? The hospital. 
If he's coming home tomorrow, <laughs> he's fit as a fiddle, but he's mad as a hornet. You know why? They made him take a bath every day. Have <laughs> Keenan dies in chair. Extra read all about it. Watch the stand, will you, Pop? I gotta get to school.